Hey there guys, I am The Sixth Machine and welcome back to another Warhammer video. Now if you are feeling at all uncomfortable or uneasy or just have a general sense of impending doom, don't worry, that is just a natural side effect of being close to the next unit in our list of assassins to review. So actually if you do feel like that, you might want to take a look behind you. But yes, today we are moving on to the Kulexis Assassin, which is one of the slightly weirder and honestly more terrifying assassins that the Imperial forces have access to, aimed at targeting and destroying enemy psychers and other warp related occurrences. They are in the fluff, seen as much more of an outcast even compared to other types of assassins, thanks to the fact that all Kulexis Assassins are blanks and what this means is that they are effectively invisible in the warp and have no warp presence so it makes them fantastic at disrupting psychic shenanigans but also means that even to non-psychically attuned people they have this ominous almost empty presence about them which makes it very uncomfortable for other people to be around. So they are overall a very cool unit lore wise they have a really quite funky model as well to go along with it, but what about their rules? Are they as good as the more overt damaged focused assassins, or do they have a bit too much niche in their use? As always we're going to be taking a look at the stat line of the assassin, and then look at their rules, abilities, weapons and stratagems, and try to come to a decision about when and if you may want to bring these guys along in your lists. Coming in at 100 points, like all the other assassins, the Kalexis, as you would expect, has the same movement 7, weapon and ballistic skill of 2+, plus, strength and toughness of 4, 5 wounds, he has 4 attacks, and that 6-up save that all assassins have, so there isn't too much more to say about that. As always, it's semi-decent as far as stat lines go, but if your enemy wants him dead, then based on just this stat line alone, he isn't going to survive too long without any kind of support. Naturally, he has the Agents of the Imperium keyword and the Execution Force rules, which are the ways that you can bring him in your Imperium list without messing up your precious army special rules like Chapter Tactics and Combat Doctrines. You will be using Agents of the Imperium if you just want to bring him, and the Execution Force rule if you decided that you wanted to take along several assassins in your list. And then also, like you would expect, he has that independent operative rule, meaning he can never take a wall or trait, and also giving him that really useful ability to set up in concealment and then be deployed at the end of one of your movement phases nine inches away from the enemy. And this actually can be quite good for the Kilexis, as not only are his weapons relatively short range, but a lot of his abilities are dependent on being nice and close to his preferred target as well, which is of course enemy psychers. So being able to see where they deploy and then reveal your Kulexis right next to them when they're least expecting it can really help your assassin to make the absolute most out of his rules and really bring the hurt to any psychers that your opponent may have. In terms of his own unique rules, the Kalexis has a few and we start off with the ominously named Abomination, which straight off sets the tone for what we can expect with this assassin. This rule means that the Kalexis can never be targeted or affected by psychic powers. No debuffs, no smite, no buffs either from your own psychers, but let's be honest that's kind of a small sacrifice to pay for the ability to just flat out negate enemies being able to hinder and impact your Kulexis as he hunts down his targets. And on top of that, Abomination also means that if a psyker is within 18 inches of your Kulexis assassin, they must subtract 2 from psychic tests and from deny the witch rolls. This again affects your psychers too, but it is an incredibly powerful ability and with the average on 2d6 being 7 and most psychic powers sitting around the 6 or 7 casting value, this really really can make a huge difference 
in the number of powers that your opponent can get off. And if you position carefully, you can hit them with that minus two penalty and still allow your psychers to deny without being within that 18 inch debuff bubble. So they will have an even better chance of beating your enemy's rolls and negating the power, even if they do manage to get it off. Obviously, as a running theme throughout this review, the Kalexis Assassin is very much dependent on your enemy, but in most armies these days, there is usually some form of Psyker, from Marine Librarians, to Mortarian, to Eldar Warlocks, or even Orc Weird Boys. It's quite likely that no matter what army you go up against, they may have a Psyker or two in their ranks, trying to get off a couple of crucial game winning spells and being able to flat out make it that much harder for them to accomplish the spells they need to get off really can let the Kilexis make his points back almost before he's even fired a shot. Another one of the Kilexis's abilities is the Psychic Assassin rule which let's be honest it's not the most imaginative name considering he is you know an assassin that kills Psyker but anyway what Psychic Assassin lets him do is target enemy Psychic characters even if they are not the closest enemy unit. This rule hasn't fully been updated to coincide with the new Lookout Sir rules of 9th edition, but effectively it's still the same. You can target an enemy psychic character with your Kilexis Assassin and pretty much just ignore Lookout Sir, which is great if your enemy was hoping that they could keep their powerful Librarian or Farseer safe by hiding him in a big blob of other units. The rule also allows you to use the Kalexis's grenades in addition to its main ranged weapon, which is a nice little bonus, giving you an extra little bit of close range firepower as the Kalexis closes in on its prey and starts to bring its powerful anti-psycho weaponry to bear. In terms of the rest of his damage output, he has one more rule which affects this, and that is the Life Drain rule. And now, although the Kalexis Assassin has no melee weapon to speak of, he is just swinging with his four strength four attacks. But despite that, relatively kind of mediocre profile, he can actually do a deceptive amount of damage because the life drain rule means that no armor saves can be taken against your attacks, which means he is effectively swinging at AP 5 or above and completely negating any armor that your target may have. Now obviously this does mean that he is much scarier against things like marine librarians or Eldar Farseers and that kind of thing who may have been relying on their armor save to keep them alive, but even against Terminators, putting them back to their 5-up invun may come as a pretty nasty surprise if they are just expecting to take no damage as your Kilexis charges into them. It unfortunately doesn't negate invulnerable saves, which is a shame because I think that would make the Kilexis really quite a terrifying opponent for enemy psychers as they do tend to have a lot of invulnerable saves as part of their profile. But despite that, being able to push things like Ezekiel from their 2-up armor save to his 4-up invulnerable does mean that you can do a deceptively high number of wounds to an enemy. And if you've managed to get some shots off with your ranged weaponry beforehand, you could still potentially kill a scary enemy Psyker before they get the chance to swing back. On the defensive front, the Kalexis has, like the other assassins, got that 4-up invulnerable save from his lightning reflexes, which, as we've mentioned, does give him quite a bit more survivability as enemies fire into him, but the big thing that the Kilexus has to bump up his durability is the incredibly powerful Ethereum rule. And now, as we all know, negatives to hit cap out at minus one in 9th edition. It is one of the things, as we mentioned, that was slightly nerfed in the Vindicare with his minus two to be hit in cover, but the Kilexus has a very sneaky way to get around this, and that is by just making the unit shooting him attack as though they are weapon or ballistic skill six plus. So it's not like they're hitting on threes and then taking negative modifiers, they just flat out count as being weapon or ballistic skill six plus instead of three plus. So it massively buffs the survivability of the Kilexus both as he's advancing up the board as well as when he's in combat and taking an enemy character from 2 plus to hit to 6 plus to hit makes him much more survivable and will take your enemy character a huge amount more rounds of combat to actually get rid of the Kilexus. And as an example, it will make a terrifying melee character like, say, Ragnar Blackmane, who would normally have about 8.3 hits 
on a normal set of swings to a measly 1.6 hits if he's going into the Calexis, which is a, a mind-blowingly big difference. And obviously the fact that it makes them ballistic skill or weapon skill 6 plus means that modifiers do still come into effect. So enemies that have plus one to hit can still be hitting you on fives in various circumstances, but it does also mean that enemies will only ever hit you on fives at the absolute best, which really, really does help to keep him alive in addition to his four up invulnerable and will allow your Kalexis to get up the board pretty safely and then even when he is in combat stick around for a good long while. In terms of the actual weaponry the Kilexis has, as we mentioned he doesn't have a dedicated melee weapon, which is a shame, but he does have some pretty nasty ranged firepower to bring to bear. First up he has access to the Psych Out Grenades, now these are 6 inch range and Assault D3, Strength 2, no AP, 1 damage. Which sounds awful, let's be honest. However, the big draw for these is that on a hit roll of 6 against a Psyker or a Demon, they do a Mortal Wound instead of their normal damage. So it's still nothing amazing and still caps out at a max of 3 Mortal Wounds, but seeing as you can throw these grenades alongside your main weapon, it is worth remembering them as you could get off a clutch 1 or 2 Mortal Wounds on your opponent and really, you know, get them down to their last couple of wounds before you charge in and kill them in melee. The Kalexis' main weapon, however, is the Animus Speculum, which has a much healthier 18 inch range and is an Assault D3, Strength 5, minus 4 AP, 1 damage gun, which changes to Assault D6 if there are any psychic units within 18 inches. You just double the shots from D3 up to D6. Again, it's not the most amazing profile at Strength 5 and minus 4 AP and only 1 damage. That is kinda eh? but it can still get a good couple of wounds off an enemy Psyker, and remember, you can target them and ignore Lookout Sir, courtesy of your Psychic Assassin rule, so it can potentially do a good bit of work against things like Eldar Warlocks, or Orc Weird Boys, and other not power armor, like save Psykers. And when we're considering this gun, it is also worth mentioning that some of the stratagems that you can use with the Kalexis really do buff it as well. On the stratagem front, the Kalexis has the two shared ones that all of the other assassins have, as well as two unique ones. The two shared ones, Priority Threat Neutralized and Shadow Assignment, are relatively useful in some situations, granting you the opportunity to gain a command point when you kill an enemy character with Priority Threat Neutralized, and also giving you a bit more customization in your list, being able to swap out an assassin before the battle begins, and so if you end up bringing a Kalexis and finding out your opponent has no psychic units, you may want to swap out for an Eversa or a Kalidus instead. But the Kalexis bespoke unique stratagems are really where he comes into his own, and they come in the form of the Soul Horror Stratagem and the Pariah's Gaze Stratagem. Pariah's Gaze is a 1 CP stratagem which you use in the shooting phase, and it increases the damage of your Animus Speculum to D3. So now, against the Psyker, you are potentially putting out D6, Strength 5, minus 4 AP, D3 damage shots at 18 inches. Now this is a legitimate threat to a lot of enemy psychers. Farseers, librarians, broodlords, hive tyrants, all of that sort of thing will be rightly worried about the potential of 6 shots doing 3 damage each and ignoring pretty much all of their armor saves. It is a very, very strong stratagem for 1 CP and really can allow you to take out that annoying enemy psyker in one overwhelming shooting phase. The other Kalexis stratagem, Soul Horror, is a bit pricier at 2 command points, and this allows you to select a Kalexis assassin in your army, and enemy units within 3 inches of that unit cannot be chosen to fight until all other units have done so, even if they charged. And this is just incredibly strong. It's very much like the Judicia's Fight Last ability, except instead of selecting one unit, it's an aura. So if there has been a few multi-charges into your battle lines, or you've charged in a few squads alongside your Kilexis, you can absolutely shut down an entire melee for your enemy, causing not just one squad, but possibly two squads and a character or two to have to face all of your attacks before they get the chance to swing. It is honestly a very, very underrated 
and powerful stratagem which will really let you kill a huge swathe of an enemy force in melee before they can do anything to react. And I honestly think that no matter what you think of his stat line or his weapons or rules in general for the Kilexis, his stratagems are really, really powerful and really useful and do almost make him worth bringing even if you aren't a fan of his actual melee or ranged damage output itself. I really do think that you will be using at least one of those stratagems every single turn if you are bringing a Kalexis, either to shoot off some enemy psychers in your shooting phase or when you want to get into combat or your opponent charges you to help shut down as many units of your opponent as you possibly can. And I think that is genuinely what makes the Kalexis so good. He may not have the absolute damage output of the Kalidus or the Eversur or even arguably the Vindicare, but he can do a really, really good job of taking out key enemy psychic units as well as massively debuffing and ruining your opponent's battle plans with his tricks. And with his Ethereum ability, he is also arguably one of the most durable assassins that you can bring to the tabletop. All in all, I think he is a pretty solid assassin all round, and if you know your opponent is bringing an army that may well be bringing a Psyker, something like Tyranids or Eldar or even Marines and Orcs, where they could conceivably bring a Psyker or two, a Colexus will almost certainly be able to find a way to make his points back, and then some, across the course of the game. But what do you think of the Kilexis? Do you think he compares well with the other assassins or is he still just a bit too niche to find much use? Let me know in the comments below and as always thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe for more Warhammer content from me but until next time I will catch you later guys.